Okay, so we're heading up north for this one, so let's jump in and have a look. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the Whiskey Shed. My name is John McGrath. I'm an Irish man in his workshop, tasting whiskey and sharing that journey with you guys. Now, spring has sprung, so the video is slightly brighter and uh, it's slightly warmer in here, so I get to wear my t-shirt for the first time in my workshop. I'm not in here freezing myself half the day, which is great. Now, we are heading up north, the very top of Ireland, up to County Antrim, to look at some offerings from Bushmills. This is Bushmills Black Bush. This is a blended whiskey. So, you can't talk about Irish whiskey without talking about Bushmills and lots of you guys in the comments have been asking me when am I going to review an offering from Bushmills well let's get into this one so as we we'll always do we'll start with a little bit of history about the bottle and what we're about to taste and know so let's jump in and do that Okay, so let's talk about the history of Bushmills. Now, a little bit of controversy to get through here because they claim to be the oldest distillery in the world and also the oldest distillery in Ireland. Not really true. And there's always arguments about who is actually the oldest distillery in Ireland. So we're gonna get into that. And I have some cheat sheets down here because there's lots of dates to get through. So I'm not gonna keep all this in my head. But Bushmills, up in County Antrim, just beside the river Bush there, the very, very top of Ireland. They have 1608 on the bottle and claim to be Ireland's oldest distillery. Now. It's a bit of a fudge, and uh, in Ireland we have a saying, never ever let the truth get in the way of a good story, and that's what's happening here. So in 1608, Sir Robert Phillips applied for a license to distill whiskey in the area, but he didn't found Bushmills. He was given a license by King James I in 1608, and that's why Bushmills uh, cheekily put 1608 on the bottle to claim to be Ireland's uh, oldest distillery. But Bushmills wasn't actually founded until 1784 by Hugh Anderson. So that's kind of where the fudge happens, because Jameson was 1780, and Kilbegan was 1757. So Kilbegan claimed to be Ireland's oldest distillery. So you can see where the fight is now happening. And uh, But Kilbegan, like all the rest of them, didn't continuously produce whiskey, changed ownership, and but Kilbegan have the claim to be Ireland's longest licensed distillery. So they have the license that dates back to 1757 and it's a continuous license to produce whiskey at that site. The license was renewed every year since 1957. So they have that claim. But Bushmills can absolutely claim to be the first producers of a single malt in the world. I think Bushmills can legitimately claim that. So that's a nice claim to have. But the date 1608 on the bottle is a bit of a fudge. And I suppose Jameson, they were producing distillate from 1780 continuously. So Jameson always produced distillate. But their bottles didn't actually come into existence until around 1960, I believe, was the, or 1950, 1950, 1960, was the first bottling of Jameson. They just produced distillate for everybody else. So you can see how all this stuff gets fudged and figures and dates on bottles. Need to do a bit of research about it. So let's move on with a little bit more history. Okay, so moving on up through the years then, another little problem that Bushmills have is that there's no record of Bushmills being produced between 1802 and 1822. So there was some break in production took place there. So this is where everything kind of gets a bit squirrely and a bit fudgy. But moving on up to 1885, I believe it was when the original uh, old Bushmills distillery burnt to the ground. So that was rebuilt and the one that exists today dates back to that far. Uh, 1895, Bushmills actually had their own steamship and they were delivering uh, whiskey Bushman's whiskey to the United States, China and Japan. So around the late 1800s was when, early 1900s was when Irish whiskey was at its height and it's getting back to those levels, well, it's actually surpassed those levels now today. But that was the golden age really of Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey was the gold standard of whiskey in the world. And of course the events of history then, the Civil War in Ireland, uh, things like that, uh, War of Independence, Civil War, then you had Prohibition in the United States and the fact that the Irish market was cut off from the Commonwealth between a trade dispute with between Ireland and Britain affected everything. And then you had bootleggers in the United States uh, distilling stuff in bathtubs and marking it Irish whiskey, which was what destroyed Irish whiskey's reputation in America. You know, like I say, Irish whiskey is the gold standard. It's always been the gold standard, not scotch. And that's not controversial to say that at all. So we won't start any fights around here. But again, uh, the events of history, like I said, took place and it destroyed the Irish whiskey market. It almost collapsed. It nearly wiped out Jameson Powers and Bushmills. And by 1970, Jameson shut down production in Dublin. So did Powers and Bushmills shut down production in Antrim. It was all consolidated under Irish distillers. They took control of everything. Everything was moved to Middleton and Cork and even Bushmills was produced there. So Tullamore Dew, Bushmills, Powers, all the big Irish whiskey brands were produced at that one 
plant in Middleton. And things got so bad that even though all those whiskies were produced there, the pot stills were only working for about three days out of every month. So that's pretty amazing considering how much uh, distillate is produced there. Now it's uh, Jameson and the likes of these whiskies are some of the biggest selling whiskies in the world. Now, 2005 rolls around, uh, Perno Rickard had bought out Irish distillers and Perno Rickard then sell Bushmills to Diageo. 2014, Diageo then sold a, a Bushmills or swapped Bushmills for a 50% stake in the uh, Tequila Don Julio tequila brand. And like I say, Diageo swapped Bushmills for a 50% stake in that. So there we go. That takes us up to present day. That's a little bit of history, a little bit of controversy about the dates that are on the bottles of Irish whiskey. But you, like I said, you cannot talk about Irish whiskey without talking about Bushmills. Bushmills is certainly up there with the likes of Jameson and Powers and the rest. So let's get nosing and tasting this whiskey. Hey, okay, let's get it in the glass and we have a cork. So let's see if we have a good cork pop. And we do indeed. Very, very nice. I didn't manage to break it this time, which is good. Okay, so let's get nosing and tasting this whiskey. Now, it is Bushmills Black Bush. Now, this is aged in Oloroso sherry casks. And I like whiskey that's aged in Oloroso sherry cask. And this I picked up for 25 euros. So at the minute, it was on sale. I think 25 euros is an absolutely fantastic price for this whiskey. Normally retains around 30 dollars, 30 euros to 35 euros, 35 dollars. And it's pretty good for that price. So it kind of puts it in the bracket of the Glendalock single barrel that I've reviewed and also the Slane whiskey that I've reviewed. So both of those are Oloroso sherry casks finish as well so it's kind of in that kind of category so you know it's a good budget blended whiskey now it's 80 percent single malt 20 percent grain whiskey and it's aged i reckon for around seven years from what i understand and it's aged in ex bourbon barrels and in oloroso sherry casks so on nose So on the nose straight away, you can get that sherry cask influence, which I really like. And you can also smell that it's Bushmills. So Bushmills, I always find, has a nice sweet smell to it. It's triple distilled, um, just like Jameson and all the rest. But very nice, and it also has a real nutty quality I, I'm getting from this. So that comes from the sherry as well, but it's much more to the forefront rather than the dried fruits that you would get from other sherry cask influences. And uh, I have to say, for in around the 30 euro mark, getting a good quality uh, sherry cask finish whiskey is a great deal. So, pretty nice on the nose. So, like I say, it has that bushmill sweetness. It has a real kind of nutty character that stands to the forefront rather than the dried fruits. But the dried fruits are in there. A little hint of spice, not much. Maybe a little bit of toffee and vanilla. And there's just a hint, now just a hint of that a scent that I get from grain whiskey that sometimes makes me worry that I'm going to get a little bit of heartburn or peppery burn from it. So it's only a hint of it in here, but then again, it is a 25 to 35 euro bottle of whiskey, so you have to remember that. But you know, it's a great price for Oloroso uh, sherry cask finish. So on the palate, so on the palate, very, very nice. I have to say, I really, I do actually really like this. I say that about a lot of whiskies and I do like whiskey, but again, it's a big hit of sweetness up front. And then that really nutty character carries through to the palate, finishes with a little bit of spiciness, and then it has some peppery heat, but it's right on the edge. So there are some green whiskies out there, and when you taste them, they finish with that kind of nasty peppery heat that gives you heartburn. This has just a hint of it, but not much. And again, it's, you know, you have to recognize the price bracket that this is in, but for the price, it's very, very good. So. It lingers with a nice sweetness, a little bit of peppery heat, and it has that real nutty character that stands out. So it kind of differentiates itself from the likes of Slane and I would say the Glendalock single barrel, which are all in around the same price and also finished in Oloroso sherry casks. So yeah, nice hit of sweetness up front, a nice nutty character. Some of the dried fruits like the figs and the sultanas, just a hint, not much, it's not dominant in this and uh, finishing with a little bit of spiciness and then a little bit of peppery heat, but it's not offensive and it's not too bad. So, very nice. So let's let this sit on its side for 10 minutes like we always do. We'll come back to it, let it open up and see what else we can pull out of it. All right, so having let it sit for 10 minutes, let's see what else we can pull out of this. So, on the nose. Yeah, it's still even more of that nutty quality I'm getting. It's quite nice, obviously from the sherry, and there's a, actually an oaky note now I'm getting now, so I'm getting some barrel note. Sweetness has died down a small bit, but that uh, kind of nutty quality from the sherry uh, remains constant. 
and a little bit more spice now maybe as well. And when I say spice, I'm not talking spicy as in chili spice, I'm talking spice as in bacon spices. So anytime you hear me on these videos, just say spice, just think of cinnamon, nutmeg and ginger and uh, all those kind of baking spices is what I'm talking about. So just a hint of something in the background there. But I think the kind of nutty, sweet and nutty character are the real kind of dominant flavors that I pull from this whiskey, which is quite nice. So on the palate again. So actually on the palate, it's the reverse. It's always amazing how that happens. A lot more sweetness now. And the nutty character has died down a small bit. So I'm getting honey now. I'm getting a lot of honey now. And a little bit spice and then that nutty character. So it was a big hit of honey. It's, a, it's mad how you leave a whiskey sit for a little while and how it changes and how the palate and the nose can, can differ. So yeah, quite different there that time around. A lot of honey I got that time. Then the nuttiness, a little bit of spice and then uh, slightly peppery heat, but not too much. So all in all, a very nice whiskey, I have to say. And I, like I said, I picked this up for 25 euros, which is an absolute bargain for this whiskey. Very nice. I like whiskey that's finished in Oloroso sherry casks. And uh, at that price, it's tough to find one and it's tough to beat. Like I say, you will find Slane and the Glendalock, which I have reviewed on this channel as well. They're also two kind of budget Irish whiskies that are finished in Oloroso sherry and uh, very, very nice. So I think any three of those, uh, you would be pleasantly surprised. And I absolutely do recommend you try Bushmills Black Bush, especially if it's, you see it for sale, grab a bottle, you won't be disappointed. You don't mind sipping on this because it's not that expensive. And uh, very, very nice with the Oloroso sherry cask finish. So there you go guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Okay guys, so there we go. That's been my review of Bushmills Black Bush. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Bushmills Ireland are the world's oldest, not oldest distillery. Um, and like I said at the start of the video, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So that's why 1608 is on the bottle. And you guys were asking me for ages to do a bottle of Bushmills and this is like my 22nd video. And like I say, you can't do Irish whiskey without talking about Bushmills. So there we go guys, that's the first offering from Bushmills. There will certainly be more coming up on this channel. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Like I say, very well priced for a whiskey, a seven year old whiskey. That's, uh, even though it's a blended whiskey and it's finished not also sherry, it's tough to beat, uh, hard to find a similar priced whiskeys that are finished in sherry casks, like I said. But uh, if you like this, try the Slane and also try the Glendalock. So that's it guys, I'm gonna get out of here now. So slime your mouth, Makara. I shall see you in the next episode. So take it easy. Sweet, nutty character. That's how I would define this. Very, very nice with just a little hint of peppery heat.